All right, welcome back here to The Hill on News Nation. Even the president of the United States had to wait in line to vote this morning. President Biden back home in Delaware to cast his ballot. Now, the race in Delaware won't be competitive, of course, as you know, but there are several counties that we will be watching all across this country on election night, and Steyerwalt is here to break it all down. I think you have seven that you're specifically looking at, but we're going through two of them here. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Do you want to do the dance? It's the last because week. In this room, <laughs> one week from tonight, I'm going to be, it's going to get freaky. It's going to get real right here in this very studio one week from tonight. And the polls are going to close in one week and about 30 minutes yeah. from now. Yeah. So, wow. There we go. Okay. Uh, you know them. You love them or love to hate them. Uh, these are the seven swing states. Mm -hmm. And we've chewed it to death. We've chewed it to death. Uh, but what about... That's a good question. What about the counties? What about the counties? There are some specific counties in each of these states that I'm going to be watching very closely. These are the key counties that I'm going to be watching because you can't watch them all. Right. So these are the counties, one in each state, that I'm going to be looking at on election day and election night and election week or whatever, however long it takes to figure out who's going to win this. And you see them, this is a mix of counties. Uh, some rich, some poor, some suburban, some urban, okay. some whatever. But I want to I want to drill down on two. Okay. So first, let's start in one of the key counties that Harris has to win, and that's Kent County, Michigan. Hmm. Okay. So, what do you see there? It's a flip. Yep. This is a county that Donald Trump won, that went to Joe Biden. This is a traditional Republican county. This is the revenge of the normies, <laughs> uh, right here. Uh, and uh, you see here white vote substantially white. There is a non-zero. Oh, I said the wrong magic word at the wrong point. That's Can all right. Go back to the previous. Head, head back there. For Can Chris. we go back one slide? I said the wrong thing, and I used the wrong open sesame. There you go. Okay, so you see this is substantially white county, fairly wealthy, fairly well-educated. Yep. That's what happens. Then you flip the page. Now we'll look at the revenge of the normies. Here's how you know what happened here. John James is running wins the county against Democrat Gary Peters. Hmm. We have a very similar race this time in, yep. with Mike Rogers and Alyssa Slotkin. These normie Republicans voted for John James for Senate and then voted for Joe Biden. I'll be watching the delta between Mike Rogers, okay. and Donald Trump, and Kent County, Michigan, okay. to tell you how the Nikki Haley kind of swishy hmm. normie Republicans are doing. Okay. okay, what about a key county in one of the states Donald Trump must win? What about the Red Wall? Oh, yes, Nash County, North Carolina. Uh, this is rural, substantially rural. This is more working class, less college educated. What's the most important number that you see there? 42.1% yeah. black. This is a substantially African American county. Who are the low propensity voters for Republicans? Those are the working class white voters. We talk about them all the time. These are the lower propensity voters for Kamala Harris. Hmm. What we're going to look for is turnout, which will be the key here. Take a look at here. Take a look at the turnout numbers. You're going to love them. 2016 to 2020. Okay. In this county, turnout, and it did for many counties across the country, but this is huge, this massive turnout. So I'm going to be watching very closely in Nash County for indications about how are working class black voters vibing. Are they turning out big? And if they're turning out big, Kamala Harris can win the race. So those are both uh, East Coast, well, Michigan's not East Coast, Eastern time zone, right? right? And so let's just say, Chris, this goes late into the night, right? Right, M many, many did. This goes late into the night, let's call it 11 o'clock Eastern here on the East Coast. What are you looking for then when it goes out West? When, it, when we go out West, the, it gets simpler because, and I love you, Nevada, I love you, Arizona. There's really <laughs> only like four counties out there that we, <laughs> that we have to watch because of sparse population, okay. that dense whatever. And the great thing about Americans is we're very different. We eat different sandwiches yep. in different parts of the country. We do whatever. But demographically speaking, there's strong consistency across the country about people of various ages, income levels, educational levels, that they tend to vote pretty consistently. Hmm. So we're going to know a great deal out of these East Coast counties. Because remember, Georgia closes at 7. North yep. Carolina closes at 7.30. 8 o'clock, we're going to, by 9.30 p.m., we're going to know a great deal about whether we're in a race that looks close but is not, right. or we're in a race that's just as close as it says, as the polls say that it is. All right. Styrewalt breaks it down. Thank you, sir. Still much more ahead.
Thank you for watching and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.